All right, so I'm finally starting to mess with Marlin 2.0. Finally got it on there compiled, basic version. So now you got to figure out what different issues I have. So right now the uh, Y, I have Simplify 3D there, but um, these directions, th this seems fine. The X it seems like it's backwards at the end stop. It's hum humming backwards, even though it's moving the right direction. I can't go back this way. It stops a certain direction. I think I had to deal with this one with the other one, the S carrier one to three. But let's see, it's actually humming the wrong way. I think. Yeah, because the end stops over here. This is the actual home over here. Um, all right, so I really haven't started messing with the Z yet, but uh, also I have another thing that says no printer attached, so I gotta figure that out too. But it is going, Marlin 2.0. Yeah, it's super quiet, listen to that. You're even just moving the axis around, you can't even hear it with the trinamic drivers. All right. All right, so I am having an issue with this capacitive sensor. It works my finger, but if I put metal over it, it doesn't work. And so I brought the bed down and it was hitting the glass before it was actually even activating this thing, so it's not even running. So, that's obviously not good, and I can't have that, so it cracked the glass. So, yeah, I wonder why it's not picking up the metal. So, yeah, like I said, these things are really, some work on 5 volts, some don't. And it's sort of working on 5 volts, but... Alright, I mean, that's metal. I mean, that should definitely go. I mean, even this thing. Oh, I saw. Okay, there it is. It, it's really, you know, it's hit or miss, no doubt, you know. Yeah, it's a capacitive sensor. I mentioned that already. Not inductive, so that's why it, it can actually pick up the glass bed. All right. All right, so I'm gonna step this thing up to 12 volts. I'm gonna have to take it back apart again and uh, pull the sensor out. And I'm gonna do a test on the glass, and that's what actually this is where the opto coupler comes in, in handy, because this actually will take the uh, take a 12 volt and send back 5 volts. So we'll have to get this going. And that's specifically what this thing is designed to do. So is to kind of alleviate the issues for this thing, the capacitive sensor. So you know to supply 12 volts to the sensor, but then to return 5 back to the printer. Alright, so I got pretty much most of the stuff fixed, the X and Y, Z humming correct. Uh, I just had to reverse wire <coughs> on the motherboard. So I just flipped it around, fixed that one. But uh, So the biggest issue, which is usually always the biggest issue, is the Z probe. Um, so I have my uh, power supply connected to 12 volts. I want to see if the sensitivity got better. You know, with the... Uh, actually running this thing at 12 volts versus 5 volts. Yeah, I mean, now this thing actually picks up, so... Let's do a quick test here, bring us out. The main thing is for this thing to hit. Uh, my LED, LED fell down again. Um, for it to pick up the bed before the, the hot end actually hits the glass. There we go, so that's where it detected it. So that should be fine. Alright, so yeah, this thing definitely needs to run on 12 volts, so... Alright, so I gotta hook up this optocoupler and get it going. Alright. Alright, so originally I thought I was gonna put it in this little box, but then I decided to give it this little, uh... I'm gonna... I already drilled the holes, I'm gonna tap it. M3 threads here. And then thread in these uh, little standoffs there. And that way I can just get it to sit right here. Like that. All right, get it going. Now the standoffs are done, I can put that in there. And if you watched my previous video, then you saw that I automatically thought that I might have to do an optocoupler, so I already made a, a 12 volt lead here. You know, put some shrink wrap on the end of it because I knew most likely I'd have to do this, so. All right, so get that going, get it wired up. Put the end stop here. That is the Z minimum. I'm gonna run that wire over here, splice it, like that. Alright. Alright, there's the optocoupler plugged in. It's not mounted yet, but I'll have to work on that. Like that. But let me show you how this thing works. I do actually have a pretty there's a pretty good diagram on the uh, thingiverse how to do that, but plug this thing in. Let's see what's up. Okay. 
triggered. Alright. Boom. I'm using my finger. The main thing is I want to make sure that this thing is detects metal. So yeah, like I said, it works reliably at 12 volts. If I can get in front of it. At 12 volts it works reliably. So and that's actually what you need because if you don't have a reliable signal, you're gonna get different offsets every time. So hoping to do it in five volts, but that's the solution to do it in 12 volts. I don't know if I ever went into detail to explain why you actually need this thing, but the sensor needs 12 volts to operate. But I can't send 12 volts back to the motherboard, it's gonna fry the motherboard. So this is what it does, it creates an isolated circuit that's totally independent. That's what optocoupler does. It's totally independent of this 12 volt circuit. So I'm basically taking five volts in and sending five volts back. So it's creating a trigger, an isolated trigger. So that's the reason why. All right, so I might have to make some modifications up in uh, Marlin to enable the pull-up resistor. Because like I said, by default, this thing wants to do a negative, uh, negative trigger. But instead of actually sending back a negative trigger, as you can see, the leads on the Z-stop are different than these. That's a negative trigger. That's the default, but typically I have to enable the pull-up resistor to, in Marlin to use a 5-volt trigger. Alright. Alright, so I'm going to go make an adjustment in Marlin to invert defaults. So let me show you this real quick. M19 command here. So as you can see, it's trigger, 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 open. So the Z is open, and that's actually what I want. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit this. And put in the way to make it trigger. Let's try another M19 right now. And trigger. That's what I want. So I think I'm going to take this glass off before I start trying to hum this uh, thing. Just because I really don't know what's going to happen. And I don't want to crack that glass. So. Alright, let's run a G20 command. It's definitely a lot quieter with those trinamic drivers. Alright, let's do a G29. Don't know what's going to happen because I haven't done one of these yet, so let's see. This is the bed, bed leveling right here. I did three point bed leveling. I think I did. There we go. Just different, I guess, in Marlin 2.0. Okay. Cool. And got some coordinates, so we're looking good. All right, guys. So I spent a couple hours troubleshooting this thing, and I couldn't get the extruder to work if I had linear advance enabled. Yeah, I mean, I had changed stepper drivers, I had changed different motors, and uh, finally, once I disabled linear advance, then I was able to get the extruder to work. E zero. So, all right. So I'm gonna try my first print. See what happens. Test cube. I'm gonna have to probably mess with the offsets. I don't have my LCD connected, so I don't have big Z. So I still ain't 100% sure if I'm going to go with my uh, TFT35 or, or the uh, original ANET LCD I had. You know, this thing in here because this actually does have baby stepping and, and this, is like, this is actually a true LCD that actually works with Marlin. So, not sure. So, and the color one looks pretty cool but it doesn't really have a lot of features though. You know, it's, it acts more like a mini computer. Alright, so we'll get this going and see what happens. All right, there it is, printed on my calibration cube. It looks, I can't tell yet, but it looks like it was pretty close, my settings, because I didn't really mess with the probe too much. And yeah, definitely it's not sticking, I'm doing something right, but can't tell for sure. Um, but look, it's not quiet, that thing is. Those are the 2208 TMC drivers. But uh, yeah, I might have to mess with the offsets a little bit, but Okay, the main thing is I wanted to see how close I was, and I'll, I'll put my glass back on. Alright. Alright guys, that's it. So, 32-bit printing. Marlon 2.0, my old printer bot. So, a couple things I gotta fix, but I'll, that's not a big deal. I gotta figure, this fan's not coming on. And this is a PETG. Not the best print, but... Like I said, my cooling fan didn't work, so... Plus, I gotta, I gotta rehome the, uh... You got stuck here. So, I gotta work on that, and... Not bad for PG, first print. Super quiet. Alright guys. Awesome. So I still gotta figure out a better solution for this, but the upcoming videos I have to uh my goal is I wanted to put this uh uh clone here, this uh what's it called, the Bontech clone in here. 
and mess with that and see if we can get it to go. So, awesome! SKR 1.1 and I have the SKR, AR, SKR 1.3 over here. So, alright, glad I was able to use the board.